What is ADHD really? Well, that's not really smart of me to ask, seeing as you probably clicked on this video because that's exactly what you're wondering as well. Don't worry, you're not alone. ADHD is probably one of the most misunderstood conditions out there today, affecting not only your attention, but every aspect of your life if you have it. As someone who was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 18, I couldn't stop researching into the truths and myths behind what it actually is, which is why I have created this video to help shed some light on the true nature of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and what it really means for someone to have it versus what society thinks it is. So if you're watching for a friend, a family member, or for yourself, I definitely recommend to stay tuned. Welcome to ADHD Vision, where you can learn how to use ADHD to your advantage. If you think you have ADHD, why don't you consider subscribing? So I actually have a personal reason for making this video. A high school friend of mine recently texted me having found out that I have ADHD, asking me if I was okay and how I was feeling, with the assumption being that I was now sick. I found this quite funny to be honest, as I would never classify or think of myself as remotely sick. By no means was he at fault, but it made me question why he thought that and where his assumptions came from. Lots of people will tell you that people with ADHD are hyper and inattentive beings that chaotically run around and seem to have no control over their lives. While these things from the outside, with the classical symptoms being inattentiveness, hyperactivity and impulsiveness, definitely seem to be the case, ADHD is also a lot more than just that. But first, a few important facts. ADHD can be found in children as well as in adults and is thought to exist in 5-7% to of the world population, while it is estimated that 80% of adults who have ADHD don't actually know they have it. If you think you might have ADHD, check out the video on the top right, which will link you to the short official ADHD test. On the neurobiology side, ADHD stems from the fact that our brains have difficulty taking up dopamine, which is the chemical responsible for happiness and motivation, leading us to indulge into lots of sensation-seeking activities which give us that dopamine, such as intense exercise, drugs, or stimulating video games. Now, despite the growing amount of research into the topic, when the question is raised where ADHD comes from, researchers point to genetics, whereas the typical conversation usually ends there. But since ADHD is mostly genetic, the question must be raised where exactly it comes from and how nature could make such a mistake. Well, according to Tom Hartman and other scientists, ADHD might not be a mistake at all, but simply a different way of seeing the world. A neurological development that preceded our last 200 years of modernization that helped us ADHDers survive in ancient hunter and gatherer societies in which ADHDers served the important role of hunters and the rest of the population as farmers. Since the main explanation for the origins of ADHD is genetics, this explanation isn't as far-fetched as it seems, and coincidentally, lots of our symptoms actually coincide with the classical characteristics of hunters, and from an evolutionary standpoint, were advantageous to our survival. If you want to know exactly what they are, I made a separate video on this, which can again be found on the top right. In a study done by the Northwestern University in 2008, two tribe groups in Kenya were compared, whereby one of them was identified to have more people with traits of ADHD than the other. Specifically, they examined the DRD47R, a genetic variant that researchers say is linked to novelty seeking, greater food and drug cravings, and ADHD symptoms. Now here's the amazing part. Research showed that members of the nomadic tribe with ADHD, those who started to hunt for their food, were better nourished than those without ADHD. Also, those with the same genetic variant in the settled village had more difficulty in the classroom, a major indicator, as we know, of ADHD in civilized society. So why is ADHD classified as a disorder? Well, there are numerous reasons. One of them being that it can be hard to fit into today's time with the brain that we have, which leads us to having problems in a society built up by predominantly non-ADHDers, or as Tom Hartman would say, farmers. Anxiety, for example, which used to help us stay alert and safe from predators, not only for us ADHDers, but everybody in the civilization, is now also classified as a disorder in today's terms. Why? Because the trait simply outgrew its time. Historically speaking, mainstream society has always experienced difficulty in accepting diversity and difference. One only has to look at the Crusades about a thousand years ago or the huge problem of slavery to see how society views those that do not fit the expected normal. Now, let's start by debunking the probably biggest assumption society holds about ADHD. Contrary to common belief, it is not that people with ADHD can't focus, but rather that we have a harder time focusing on things that don't interest us, whilst having an easier time focusing on things that do, where we are able to enter a special mental state called hyperfocus. 
People with ADHD can therefore be very much focused on things, just not on the things that don't stimulate our brain, such as doing the dishes or listening to a lecture about the theoretical background of 15th century art. No offense if you're into that kind of stuff, by the way. This is one of the reasons for why society thinks that people with ADHD aren't as intelligent and that people who perform well in school cannot have it, which couldn't be further from the truth. As fellow ADHDer Albert Einstein will surely tell you if he were still alive today. The truth is that having ADHD leads to a completely different way of seeing the world because your brain chemistry is completely different from people without ADHD. This is often why people with ADHD, for example, often retrospectively talk about never really being able to fit in when in school, usually having formed a group of other ADHDers who understand them and are in the same frequency, so to speak. We are also emotionally hypersensitive people, where on one day we might feel like we are in the biggest slump ever, only to be the happiest person on the planet two days later. In a world where being focused on mundane tasks for eight hours straight is the norm, it can be very difficult for ADHDers to find their path. It is therefore often ignored that people with ADHD actually possess extraordinary abilities, such as being a lot more risk-taking, creative, enthusiastic, and being able to make lightning-fast decisions, all of which non-ADHDers are known to admire and have a more difficult time performing. On the career side, ADHDers are three times more likely to own their own business, and that's according to Forbes. Indeed, there are actually a number of jobs out there which allow us to work with rather than against our brain, granting us the opportunity to become highly successful. Again, if you want to know which ones they are, click on the video on the top right. Now even though lots of ADHDers possess these breathtaking abilities, it can still be hard to fit into a society that doesn't yet fully understand ADHD and where over 90% of people don't have it. Where the school system or other educational systems were all designed by non-ADHDers. Simply put, ADHDers are being put into the position of having to play to the drums of the majority with medication such as Viennese, Adderall, Methylphenidate, and many more being the main form of treatment. Taking these forms of medication can indeed help you manage your symptoms and help with concentration in school or university, where these meds can now provide you with a necessary focus for subjects that don't really interest you, so you don't fail, and maybe even help you fit in with your neurotypical peers. It is therefore no wonder why lots of people with ADHD swear on medication and the help it provides to them, which on the other hand obviously is also great news for the big pharma companies. I myself have taken medication and I can tell you it did help me as well for the subjects that didn't really interest me. But it also made me feel a lot less like myself. That combined with the potentially harmful long-term side effects, which are still unknown, is why I now prefer my normal way of being. While for a few people who have a very severe form of ADHD, medication might be the only way, there are also other natural tools which lots of us are now using, such as regular exercise, that can help manage and deal with our ADHD in today's time. To conclude, due to the prevalence of ADHD in the world, different researchers have coined the idea of ADHD actually being a different kind of brain chemistry which might have originated in hunter and gatherer times and not a sickness. Whereas lots of other scientists will still tell you that the latter is the case. Now at this point I must address that I am not a licensed doctor or academic and although I would love to take credit for the great ideas presented in this video, they have been predominantly thought of by scientist Tom Hartman. I am merely someone with ADHD wanting to learn how to live my best life, all the while sharing this knowledge with everyone who wants to find out how to work with rather than against their ADHD. Whatever the truth may be, the benefit of seeing your brain as something that has developed for a reason rather than being a mistake would surely assist anyone in their quest for happiness. However, the question remains about how we can get rid of the stigma surrounding ADHD. Well, the best way to fight any stigma is through spreading the word. If you've watched until here, even though you might still be skeptical about the hunter theory, you will know that there are actually lots of advantages to having ADHD. Now, let me be clear. That doesn't mean there aren't very difficult struggles associated with it in today's time. But from a psychological viewpoint, confidence is built through recognizing and being able to work on your strengths rather than being constantly reminded of your weaknesses. For us to start combating the stigma around ADHD being something that makes us less than others just because we're different, we must start to recognize that it truly might just be a different way of seeing the world, which is why I am proud to announce the official launch of the Advantage clothing line. If you're someone who has or wants to start using ADHD to your advantage, why not buy a shirt or a hoodie to remind yourself of your abilities? 
Not only will you be supporting yourself in your journey, together with other ADHDers, you will also help fight the stigma around your brain and will obviously also support me in my journey, which is producing helpful and informative ADHD content to help you guys reach your true potential. Click on the top right now and get everything at 15% off with the code MYBESTSELF. If you've bought a shirt or a hoodie, be sure to send me a picture on my Instagram. The best pictures will be featured on my next video. Now I'm passing it off to you guys in the comments. What do you think is probably the most misunderstood fact about ADHD in today's society? What don't you agree with? And what were you able to learn today? Let's start a conversation down below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please make sure to drop me a like if this video was able to illuminate things and follow to not miss out on any more content on how to use ADHD to your advantage. Now be sure to check out these related videos on things we talked about in the video and I will see you again on Tuesday in two weeks. Till next time guys.